How's it going, people? Well, we're almost done. And I believe the chapters get a little longer, so I don't have to keep doubling them up. Chapter 7 looks kind of long and a bit dry. But I got this for company. I got to drink these up. Bought a six pack. Didn't really care for it. It's the first sip is exquisite. And then that over hopped piney taste starts to overwhelm. Starts tasting like something you would clean your floor with. <sighs> Too hopped up for me. <sighs> but waste not, want not. Alright. Moroni presents Mormon's teachings on faith, hope, and charity. And that's it for the masthead. One. And now I, Moroni, write a few of the words of my father, Mormon, which he spake concerning faith, hope, and charity. For after this matter did he speak unto the people, as he taught them in the synagogue, which they had built for the place of worship. So they got churches, synagogues, and a temple. That's sort of an amalgamation of nuttiness, don't you think? I mean, a temple's like a Jewish version of, of a megachurch, except there's only one, and it's there can only be one. Synagogues are the non-Christian version of a church, or just people gather, and they got churches. Sounds like a bunch of Gentiles trying to sound like they know about the Hebrew culture. Two, and now I, Mormon, we've switched narrators and one after one verse. <laughs> Speak unto you, my beloved brethren, and it is by the grace of God, the Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ, and all, wait, and his holy will, because of the gift of his calling unto me, that I am permitted to speak unto you at this time. Sorry about all the sniffling. Hay fever's kicking my ass. Three. Wherefore, I would speak unto you that are of the church, or that synagogue, that are the peaceable followers of Christ, and that have obtained a sufficient hope by which ye can enter into the rest of the Lord for this time henceforth, until ye shall rest upon him, rest with him. Uh, ye shall rest with him uh, in heaven, that magic place up there in the clouds. It's like a castle in the sky or something. Streets made of gold. They don't know how it stays aloft, but it's all magical. Four. And now, my brethren, I judge these things of you because of your peaceful walk with the children of men. Five. For I remember the word of God, which said, which saith, By their works ye shall know them. For if their works be good, then they are good also. You mean, if somebody does some good things, they're all good? And if you do bad things, you're all bad? I think, think, think people are more complicated than that. Yeah. Six. For behold, God hath said, A man being evil 
cannot do that which is good. Really. Uh, Mussolini got the trains to run on time and, and hell, gave the Catholic Church whatever they wanted. <laughs> so did Hitler. Yeah. For if he offereth a gift or prayeth unto God, except he shall do it with real intent, it profit him nothing. Intent. I mean, like what? He wants something? Intent? Uh, you know, I used to pray to God and I wouldn't ask for anything. I'd just like, how's it going? Uh, still waiting to hear back from you. Uh, looking forward to it. Uh, I clean my room and everything. I'm ready for a godly visitation. Seven. I'm going to get through this. Man, I'm totally off today. For behold... It is not counted unto him for righteousness, those good things he did, because he's bad. So what he did was somehow still bad, even though it was good. He didn't do it with the right intent. So it doesn't count. Eight. For behold, if a man being evil giveth a gift, he doth it grudgingly. Some good people grud grudgingly give up their stuff. <laughs> Still theirs. Wherefore, it is counted unto him, same as if he had retained the gift. So I'll just keep my shit then. It's fine. Or I'll find somebody who's a little less uh, persnickety about it. You know what? Most people just say thank you. You evil bastard. That was a good thing you did. <laughs> people are more complicated than that. There's all kinds of facets. And, you know, I mean... I mean, Ted Bundy saved a kid from drowning and he was an evil fucking piece of shit. He fucked up and did something good. Because evil as he was, he was still a human being who just chose to be an evil piece of shit. <laughs> and he was a Mormon, I understand, or at least raised one. That's what I, that's what I understand. <sighs> anyway, um, and he probably gave some good gifts, and they didn't count. Alright. Okay. Wherefore, it is, if you do it grudgingly, uh, is counted unto him the same as if he had retained the gift. Wherefore, he is counted evil before God. Nine. And likewise also, it is counted evil unto a man if he shall pray and, and not with real intent of heart. Yea, and it profiteth him nothing, for God receiveth none such. 10. Wherefore, a man being evil cannot do that which is good, neither will he give a good gift. It's a long way of saying something that you could have squeezed into a fortune cookie. On gold. But he, his last words, you know, his last gasp. <laughs> Not so good thus far. Not so interesting or original. Eleven. For behold, a bitter fountain cannot bring forth good water. Neither can a good fountain bring forth bitter water. It's a new way of saying the same old fucking shit. <laughs> Unimpressed, still. And we're almost done. <sighs> totally lost my voice. Let's see. Yeah. Wherefore, a man being a servant of the devil. 
cannot follow Christ. <sighs> and if he follow Christ, he cannot be a servant of the devil. <sighs> Twelve. Don't believe in either, by the way. They both sound like assholes. <laughs> Fictional. You know, it's like Thor and Loki all over again. Twelve. Wherefore, all things which are good cometh of God, and that which is evil cometh of the devil. For the devil is an enemy unto God, and fighteth against him continually, and inviteth and enticeth to sin, and to do that which is evil continually, which is sin. You need to send it twice, differently. And a little oxymoron there. Thirteen. Get a little parched. It's pretty nice. Just a little too hopped up. <clears throat> but behold, that which is of God inviteth and enticeth to do good continually. Really. Wherefore everything which inviteth and enticeth to do good and to love God and to serve Him is inspired of God. So it comes from God. God gives it to you. You give it back to God. But he added a middleman. Actually, there's three buff two buffers, you know. <laughs> you hit the ghost, you hit JC, you hit the old man. That's the way it goes. The ladder of command. <laughs> Fifth, wait, uh, Fourteen. Wherefore, take heed, my beloved brethren, that ye do not judge that which is evil to be of God. He didn't make the parasites and flesh-eating bacteria and other natural horrors that are trying to survive at the same time and eating indiscriminately whatever they can eat. And sometimes that's your ass. Thanks. Anyway, God didn't make that. The devil did. Because it's bad. <laughs> Fifteen. For behold, my brethren, it is given unto you to judge that ye may know good from evil. And the way to judge is as plain that ye may know with a perfect knowledge. Perfect. As the daylight is from the dark night. We're getting all poetic here now, aren't we? <laughs> Sixteen. For behold, the Spirit of Christ is given to every man, that he may know good from evil. Wherefore, I show unto you the way to judge for everything which invited to do good and to persuade to believe in Christ is sent forth by the power and gift of Christ. It's a little loop going on there. Wherefore, ye may know with a perfect knowledge it is of God. Uh, starting to sound like Scientology almost, you know, the, the language. Seventeen. But whatsoever thing persuadeth men to do evil, and believe not in Christ, and deny him, and serve not God, that ye may know with a perfect knowledge it is of the devil. Damn it. For after this manner doth the devil work. For he persuaded men, wait, for he persuaded no man to do good, no, not one, neither do his angels. 
Neither do they who subject themselves unto him. Don't believe in him either. Eighteen. And now, my brethren, seeing that ye know the light by which ye may judge, which light is the light of Christ, see that you do not judge wrongfully with that same judgment, which ye judge, ye shall also be judged. I should have drank the judged. No, because then this video would be over already. Fucking up enough already. <sighs> Nineteen. Wherefore, I beseech of you, brethren, that ye should search diligently in the light of Christ, that ye may know good from evil. And if ye will lay hold upon every good thing, and condemn it not, ye certainly will be a child of Christ. Twenty. And now, my brethren, how is it possible that ye can lay hold upon every good thing? Twenty-one. And now, I come to that faith of which I said I would speak. And I will tell you the way whereby ye may lay hold of every good thing. Twenty-two. Write this down. It sounds important. <laughs> For behold, God, knowing all things, being from everlasting to everlasting, it's a, isn't one enough? <laughs> Behold, he sent angels to minister unto the children of men, to make manifest concerning the coming of Christ. And in Christ there should come every good thing. <laughs> yeah. So far, not so good. <laughs> I guess it's to come. Just it hasn't come to pass. 23. And God also declared unto prophets by his own mouth that Christ should come. Yeah, I, I cross-referenced those <laughs> on my own, and a lot of people have. And, I mean, stuff that connects to Samson and shit, you know? <laughs> and the people returning to Babylon. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, good job. 24. Yeah, they talk about Hezekiah, too. But, oh, that was JC. Uh, and behold, there were divers ways that he did manifest things unto the children of men, which were good. And all things which are good cometh of Christ. Even Oreo cookies? Uh, otherwise men were fallen, and there could no good thing come unto them. Twenty-five. Wherefore, by the ministering of, the, of angels, and by every word which proceeded forth out of the mouth of God, men began to exercise faith in Christ. And thus by faith they did lay hold upon every good thing. And thus it was until the coming of Christ. Christ, this is a long chapter. 26. And after that he and after that he came, men also were saved by faith in his name. And by faith they became sons of God. And as sure as Christ liveth, 
he spake these words unto the, our fathers, saying, Whatsoever thing ye shall ask the Father in my name, which is good, in faith believing that ye shall receive, behold, it shall be done unto you. And if you don't get it, it's because you fucked it up somehow. You had a doubt somewhere. And you gotta try harder. You're not mentally crushed enough yet <laughs> to fit in. How do you think they get themselves square? <laughs> 27. Wherefore... Sorry. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, have miracles ceased, because Christ hath ascended into heaven, and hath sat down on the right hand of God, to claim of the Father his rights to mercy, which he hath upon the children of men? Huh? <laughs> That's pretty messy. Twenty-eight. For he hath answered the ends of the law, and he claimeth all those who have faith in him. And they, do, and they who have faith in him will cleave unto every good thing. Wherefore he advocated the cause of the children of men. And he dwelleth eternally in the heavens. 29. And because he hath done this, my beloved brethren, he just keeps, does he really have to keep saying that? On gold. You're abridging it. Leave that out. There's one at the top. Leave that one. Take the rest out. God. You're a lousy editor, Moroni. Lousy abridger. All right, let's get to it. This is running long. Uh, 28. I forgot where I'm at. Yeah, 28. For he had answered the ends of the law, and he claimeth all those who have faith in him. And they who have faith in him will believe to every good thing. Wherefore he advocateth the cause of the children of men. And he dwelleth eternally in the heavens. <laughs> yeah, over the rainbow. <sighs> yep. Okay. 29. And because he hath done this, my beloved brethren, hath miracle ceased. Behold, I say unto you, Nay, neither have angels ceased to minister unto the children of men. <laughs> Just not lately. Maybe, you know, as recently as uh, between 400 and 420 A.D., or C.E., how would you like it? <laughs> Just lost my place. It all looks the same. All right. Yeah. 30. For behold, they are subject unto him to minister according to the word of his command, showing themselves unto them of strong faith and a firm mind in every good form of godliness. Makes me think of Eric the Viking where they're in pagan land and the Christian, the one Christian on board is going, I don't see anything. You know, they're seeing titans babbling. And, you know, Eric the Viking. <laughs> Mickey Rooney's the head Viking. Come on. <laughs> Gotta love it. Uh. Yeah. 31. And the off.
office of their ministry is to call men unto repentance. It's all about crushing you and beating you down, ain't it? And to fulfill and to do the work of the covenants of the Father, which he hath made unto the children of men to prepare the way among the children of men by declaring the word of Christ unto the chosen vessels of the Lord, that they may bear testimony of him. 32. And by so doing, the Lord God prepareth the way that the residue of men may have faith in Christ, that the Holy Ghost may have place in their hearts according to the power thereof. <laughs> okay. And after this matter bringeth to pass, I gotta do something special for that. Little single malt. Er. Just a little. Oh. Bring it to pass the Father, the covenants which he had made unto the children of men. You think this could have been maybe cut down a bit? Oh, that's right, they needed to be a book. Book link, not a pamphlet. <sighs> 33. And Christ hath said, If ye will have faith in me, ye shall have power to do whatsoever thing is expedient in me. <sighs> You'll have the power to serve him even better. Thirty-four, and he hath said, Repent, all ye ends of the earth, and come unto me, and be baptized in my name, and have faith in me, that ye may be saved. Thirty-five, and now, my beloved brethren, if this be the case, that these things are true which I have spoken unto you, and God will show unto you with power and great glory at the last day that they are true. When the world's over, you'll know. <laughs> yeah, I think I can wait. And if they are true, and if they are true, has the day of miracles ceased? Yes and yes. <laughs> Actually, no and yes. There we go. It isn't true, and I don't think they're... I mean, the miracles are what people can do. And that is amazing. 36. Or have angels cease to appear unto the children of men? Or has he withheld the power of the Holy Ghost from them? I'm assuming that's the men. The children of men. Because <sighs> the angels are probably already connected. Or will he, so long as time shall last, or the earth shall stand, or there shall be one man upon the face thereof to be saved. So, what is that, multiple choice? Uh, let's see, I'll take the time running out. Uh, 37. Behold, I say unto you, Nay, for it is by faith that miracles are wrought. And if it is by faith that angels appear and minister unto men, you're just probably off your meds, that's all. <laughs> uh, wherefore, these things have... Wait, therefore, if these things have ceased, woe be unto the children of men. 
for it is because of unbelief, and all isn't all is vain. So you mean my being a infidel is blocking your reception? Is that it? so? The miracles aren't happening. Thirty-eight. For no man can be saved according to the words of Christ, save they shall have faith in his name. Wherefore, if these things have ceased, then has faith ceased also? And awful is the state of man, for they are as though there had been no redemption made. 39. But behold, my Beloved brethren, God, I should have drank to that. That would have been, I don't know, too much. <laughs> I judge better things of you, for I judge that there's that judging again. That could have made a good drinking game. Should have read ahead. I judge better things of you, for I judge that ye have faith in Christ because of your meekness. For if ye have not faith in him, then ye are not fit to be numbered among the people of his church. I can live with that. Forty. And again, my beloved brethren, I would speak unto you concerning hope. How is it that ye can attain unto faith? Save ye shall have hope. Yeah. They go together, don't they? 41. And what is it that ye shall hope for? Behold, I say unto you, that ye shall have hope through the atonement of Christ and the power of his resurrection to be raised unto life eternal. And this because of your faith in him according to the promise. 42. Wherefore, if a man have faith, he must needs have hope. For without faith there cannot be any hope. Ah. Yeah, in your opinion. 43. And again, behold, I say unto you that he cannot have faith and hope, save he shall be meek and lowly of heart. There's that crushing down again. Get you nice and square. 44. If so, his faith and hope Hope is vain, for none is acceptable before God, save the meek and lowly in heart. And if a man be meek and lowly in heart, and confess by the power of the Holy Ghost that Jesus is the Christ, he must needs have charity. For if he have not charity, he is nothing. Wherefore, he must needs have charity. <sighs> 45. And charity suffereth long, and is kind, and envieth not, and is not puffed up, seeketh not her own. Uh oh. Okay. Her. Her own. She's charities. Yeah, that'd be a good name for a girl. Yeah. It is not easily provoked. Wait, her own is not easily provoked? Thinketh no evil and rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things. Hopeth all things, endureth all things. 
46. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, if ye have not charity, ye are nothing. For charity never faileth. Wherefore, cleave unto charity, which is the greatest of all. For all things must fail, just like this book does. Major fail. <laughs> 47. But charity is the pure love of Christ. And it endureth forever. And whoso is found possessed of it at the last day, it shall be well with him. Him. 48. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, damn, that would have been a kick-ass drinking game. Pray unto the... <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> Pray unto the Father with all the energy of heart that ye may be filled with this love which hath bestowed upon all those who are true followers of his Son. Jesus Christ. I thought you meant Krishna. That ye may become the sons of God. Promise. Cross our hope, heart. Hope to die. And live forever after you're dead. And if not, well, there's a complaint department. You know, just come back from the dead and bitch about it. <laughs> that it wasn't true. Yeah, it doesn't work that way, unfortunately. That'd be funny. <laughs> May become the sons of God that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is, and we may have this hope that we may be purified even as he is pure. Amen. And that's it for seven. And damn, that was a ball buster, but I'm glad I did it. I think I actually learned something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that would make a good drinking game. I'm going to highlight all those. Maybe I'll do this chapter again sometime. I'm going to put this one up, though. Just because that would be a kick-ass game. Anyway, running along... Let me know if you learned something. I think I did. Uh, <laughs> peace the fuck out. Have a wonderful, whatever the fuck it is you're having. Bye. And we're almost done. Stay tuned.